I'm back. Welcome to the Drunk and Dater Podcast. I'm your host, Sophia, and I'm going to stop singing and just drink my tequila. <laughs> okay, so let's start off with the fun part. I am drinking pumpkin spice coffee. Hey, fall. How are ya? And I mix it with my favorite coffee creamer, which is like just a coconut coffee creamer. And a shot of tequila. It's yummy. So good. I usually like rum in my coffee. This tequila in my coffee is giving the run a given the rum a run for its money. So anyway, I've been gone. So where have I been? I've been around the world and back. Just kidding. Um, I just had some really, really, really bad technical issues. It all started with the day before my launch, before I launched my fall collection. Hey. Um, the internet on my phone gave out. And I live in the middle of nowhere. Like, if you're in my test knit group, you know that it's hard for me to respond sometimes or even get on Instagram or even get on Ravelry or anything because I don't have internet service where I live. I try. I don't have it. Just because I live in pretty much a technology desert. Like, people out here only use their 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 internet just check their email you know and my husband and I like we love Hulu we love Netflix we love all that stuff and unfortunately the internet that was available here just isn't strong enough so we have to get it from our phones which is not that bad you know it's not as comfortable as constantly having Wi-Fi available but you know it's better than nothing right well, with the launch of my line and getting everything together, I apparently had exceeded my, my like gigabyte or whatever on my, from my phone company. I exceeded it to the point where um, I could not, they wouldn't even allow me to buy anymore. Like that's how bad it was. Like I used up way more than anyone has ever used up. Because I do work 24-7. I really, truly do. I wake up with my phone in my hand and I go to sleep with my phone in my hand. And it's not all playing solitary, buddy. So, I just didn't have any service. And on top of that, on top of that, so I had to go work at a Starbucks to make sure that my line came out on time. Which it did. Yay. But, worst thing, too, that happened is... um my phone was running out of memory space and i'm kind of old like i'm older than i look and back in my day okay our cell phones had little sd card areas we could add more memory kind of like a camera and they took it away and then when i got my new phone which is not even that new um they apparently put another sd uh entry in there so i had to figure out how to use that because back in my day just pop it in and you're good and then when i google it it's like and a plethora of steps that it's just like, what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I mean, I was on Napster back in the day, like, okay. <laughs> so like all this like new tech stuff, it's just like, I don't know. So I had to go to my phone carrier and talk to them. And pretty, pretty much he just explained it like, oh, you just have to, um, you just have to plug put it in and they didn't have one there for me that was a decent price so I had to order it from Best Buy got it shipped to the store picked it up put it in my phone and here I am everybody I finally can film a podcast now because I do film on my phone I do not have a camera because I am not technologically savvy and my computer is very old very old MacBook. My MacBook is from like 2010. That's almost 10 years ago now. It doesn't seem like it is, but it is. And I just, it's so old. It will not, I'm looking because all my pets are outside and 
my cats being like queen of the castle by standing up and they all want to go in. I think the kitty cats want to go in. Ah, whatever. Y'all staying out for a little bit longer. They're fine. They're in a fenced in like pet run. I digress. What, what was I talking about? What was I talking about? Ah, whatever. This tequila is really good. Anyway, I solved all my technology problems and here I am. And I have literally a whole table of stuff that I've been working on to show you. First, have you seen my Moby Tea? I have been living in this Moby Tea, like no lie. I This is like the third time I've worn it this week. <laughs> I mean, wool is micro, whatever, microbial or, or whatever, right? You know, and it wicks and it's so comfy. It's not overtly warm. Um, I wore it on chilly mornings. I wore it on cool nights. I wore it inside the house. And honestly, it's so comfy. This is the most comfy thing I've ever knitted, ever. And it looks really basic, but that's what I love about it. I just love, I mean, I love how the neckline is just, you know, a square neckline. Like, can't like, I just find that really like cool and rustic looking. And I know it's my design. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but... It's just so comfy and I love that I don't have to shave my armpits, hey. And <laughs> you could wear it with leggings, hey, because it goes, like, it has a swooping hemline. Man, all my pets are trying to get back in. You're fine. They have food and water out there. And they generally play for, like, ever. They're just, they just like to have the option. <laughs> as soon as I let them in, they're going to be like, and eh, time to go back out again. So, yeah. But... Love my Moby tea. There's a kitty cat hair on it. Story of my life. Um, so, I've been working on a lot of things. I have a lot next to me. Let's get this showed on the row. This showed. Let's get this show on the row. <laughs> okay. So, my tequila and lime poncho kit giveaway has ended and I've already shipped off the one-of-a-kind tequila and lime poncho kit to the winner. The kit included one bulky nitpicks, one skein of nitpicks bulky Peruvian wool yarn, non-superwash, and one skein of my own hand spun fiber originally purchased from Hanks in the Hood. And I think the one I gave away is Merino Bamboo and Silk Blend. Um, unfortunately, Hanks in the Hood did not put the fiber contents when they did their Knit Picks collab. So, like, on the actual product, you had to look it up on the website. So, it's, so by the time I got to spinning it, they, the, the collab had already ended. Um, and I can no longer find what's in my fiber content. But that's okay because I flippin' love this yarn. And I know it has to be either Merino Bamboo or Merino Silk or all three mixed together. That's just because I think that's what she mainly used for her Knit Picks line. I mean, and look how beautiful that color is. It's like a gradient. It starts off at like this really deep, almost black purple, and it ends with a beautiful stripe of yellow. Oh, so gorgeous. And I still had enough yarn to do like a tassel. So, you can buy that also on Ravelry or on my website. And yeah, I love that poncho, but I love this top too. Do you guys hear that prison break? Hey. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see what I got on my magic table to show you. First, um, oh, last week or two weeks ago, I cannot remember for the life of me, I did my first wine and knit pairing. Oh, look at this cowl. Oh, look at this cowl. Oh, look at the hat. 
Oh, look at this cowl. Oh, I don't do big knits because they hurt my hand. I do have a slight case of carpal tunnel, but this, I knitted this in maybe over two classes of wine, so maybe like an hour or two. And I wasn't just knitting, I was doing other stuff as well. And I just use uh, synthetic roving because I don't like to waste my flies. I don't like to waste. I use synthetic roving because I don't like to waste um, my real wool roving on big knits just because they do have a tendency to pill. Um, just because they are just roving. So this type of cowl is not really a long wearing cowl. But it's really on trend right now. It's so stinking soft. I probably won't wear it all the time because there's only a certain place you could wear such a warm garment. But it's so, so soft. Oh, and it was so cheap to make because I got the synthetic roving on sale. And I paired this. I paired this particular knit which, with, uh, with Sheep Thrills Pinot Grigio, which was delicious. So... I highly recommend you check out my wine pairings blog post because this pattern and every pattern that will be on my wine pairings blog is 100% free. And I'm working on another pattern for that blog using da, 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 da. most of my knits on there on my blog will be either really small knits or bulky knits that can be knitted up in one night. Because the whole point of the blog is that you can drink and knit and have a finished project by the end of your night. And so this is going to be a slip stitch cowl design. And of course, all my, all my designs, it's going to be super duper easy and have a photo tutorial to go with it. Just because we are drinking responsibly. responsibly right and you don't want anything hard like brioche or anything <laughs> as much as I love brioche knitting I just can't I just can't imagine no 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 but look at this yarn how fun this is all synthetic too just because around this time, I just flip flop between synthetic and wool because I it's fall season and I get really itchy. I have eczema and who knows what else. I mean, I already got like my rash on my face because <laughs> the season is changing. And so when I wear my cowls, they're most likely going to be synthetic just because of my eczema and personal problems. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I also started this one. This is an alpaca mix yarn. Um, got it from a big box store. And I am knitting a tank. It's gonna be ha it's gonna have negative ease, a few inches of negative ease. All of my animals are loud. Guess who's being loud now? It's my bunny. Supposed to be quiet, bunny. That's why she's supposed to be a quiet animal, but she's not. She's very loud. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> Just look at that. This is going to be a, um, a tank with like a cow nap. Oh, it's going to be so soft. And there's like a little bit of like... Just like the yarn just looks so soft. There's a little bit of, I don't know what you call that, like loft. Yeah, loft to the yarn. It's so gorgeous. Um, I did something different. I did the ribbing in bigger needles. So that way when I do the big cowl neck, it'll just be really flowy and it'll match the bottom too. Because I'm going to go back to bigger needles. This is like a variant of my Aria top. If y'all are familiar with that, I wore it in another podcast. Only it's a little bit more of a classic style. So it's a style that you can wear again and again, year after year. While the Aria top is a little bit of a quicker knit. Um, and it's more of like a trendier piece. So if you, like, I'm not sure if I'm going to make this into a pattern. I might, I might not. I mean, I kind of have to save my, my pattern grading energy for like 
um, for my winter line that's coming out soon. So <laughs> I may or may not. Grading a pattern, y'all, it takes a lot of work and effort. <laughs> and I might have to save that one for another time. But I also have been knitting socks like no one's business. And I'm going to show you the socks I knitted in a bit. But here's what I plan on knitting with. Ooh, it's my yarn bulb. One of my birdies fell off. I have to glue it back on. But this is hand spun. Um, I, I love knitting from hand wound balls. I absolutely love it. So there's some angora stuff to it because I have an angora bunny. This is my life. <laughs> but I love knitting from hand spun balls, hand spun balls, especially when I'm knitting socks specifically. Look how fall that color is. Oh, so nice. Um, I wanted to do like a fun cable with this, but this is a two ply hand spun and it's not really consistent spun um I think I spun this on my kiwi which at the time was really hard for me to spin consistently on now I have a shock sidekick it just fits me better um though the kiwi is a wonderful wonderful wheel okay but the shock sidekick just fits me better and I spun this this is the last thing I spun on my on my uh kiwi and it's beautiful but it's not as consistent as I, I mean, I wasn't going for super consistent. I was going for a rustic yarn, but I wasn't going for that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't fix that, but it's in there. So what I'm trying to say is I can't do this sock pattern that I wanted to do with this. Maybe I'll do a variant of Hermione socks, which is pretty much a sock with a pearl bump pattern on it. We'll see. I also have, because I've been on a DK sock thing. Leftovers from my Aria top. This is Dos Tierras, Marabrigo. So soft, so cozy, so breathable. My eczema is like, does not care about this. Like, I, I could put it against my rash right now. <laughs> and it doesn't itch at all. And I love this. And I'm going to make a DK sock pattern. But that pattern will only be available if you are part of my Toe Up Masterclass. Two at a time socks, baby. Two at a time socks. But bam, look at all these samples. But bam. And I got one more sample because I'm going to be turning the heel on camera today. But bam. And with these toe-up socks, they're all knitted with DK weight. So they knit up super duper fast, like supersonic speed fast. I mean, I've knitted all of these in like a week, literally. And they weren't even like my main project. I was just knitting for funsies. It wasn't like a thing that I was like, must get this done, must get this done. It was pretty simple. So... Yay, my sock class. I'm so excited for my sock class. <laughs> it's going to be online. It's not going to be on Skillshare. It originally was going to be on Skillshare, but I decided against it because I did not like the fact that you had to purchase a membership. I don't believe in those membership things. I really don't. I mean, unless it's really worth it. Um, nah, man. And so I'm probably just going to have the the class on uh, being sold on Ravelry and on my website for a pretty good price it's going to be much cheaper than like a craftsy class or anything like that and the way it's going to work you're going to have a link to a google classroom class and all the videos are going to be there and you're going to be able to talk to each other and discuss your pattern updates and problem solve and ask me questions or ask your classmates questions um you're going to have access to so many fun things from like besides the sock pattern which is completely customizable to any foot any style of foot and pretty much any sock base like you don't have to do dk weight i just highly recommend a dk weight sock for your first sock 
but you also get like a sock knitters worksheet that gives you a foolproof way of knitting the socks. You'll get like the pattern, you'll get troubleshooting sheets. The videos are about 30 minutes in length, like in total. They're a series of five minutes or under videos. And if you watch them all together, it's like a 30 minute video. They're designed so you can watch them and pause and repeat as you knit your socks. Um, you can also um, do it just with the handwritten, not handwritten, but we'll just put the written instructions. And I'm just so excited. And the reason why they're DK is because, not just because they knit up faster, but I just cannot stand worsted and bulky socks. Cannot stand them because when you wear them, guess what? Take your shoes off and you're walking around in bulky and worsted socks, you're gonna slip and fall. I'm telling you, like the gauge is just so big. This is just a lot more easier to wear with boots and with regular shoes. I mean, they're not that thick. I have socks, store-bought socks, socks that are thicker. And they're still really warm. They're really fast to knit. They're wonderful, wonderful gifts because I knitted all of these in like a week. Like these are almost done. And and my method is so easy. I mean, if you think magic loop is too fidgety, if you think the two at a time toe up sock is too fidgety to start, because it can be a little fidgety and frustrating. My way of doing it is just foolproof. I mean, it's still the same method, but I just have an easier way of doing it, if that makes sense. Because I'm all for easy, man, okay? I'm the drunk knitter. I am not the, the hard knitter. I should just be called the lazy knitter too, but I absolutely believe in this method, especially the heel. The heel is a variation of a heel that you see a lot um, in toe up socks. I just made it easier. And then you could pick different finishing cups. You could pick different insteps. So I got a high end step and a low end step and I explain what that means and all that jazz, it just basically means if you got a wide foot or a narrow foot, I got different options for you. And I am so proud of this. It took me forever to film this and edit, and now I'm doing the voiceover and final videos. And I am just very, very, very proud of this thing. And I'm just so happy I released such an easy way to knit socks. Like, to me, it's just like, oh, because I've always wanted to sock knit when I was a beginner, like even a few years ago. And I just could never figure it out because they they had classes, but it wasn't my, like they only had classes for like, oh, make your first sock in bulky. I don't want a bulky sock. I don't want a super bulky sock. I don't want a worsted weight sock. I want a sock that I could knit and wear as a sock, you know, that's functional. I don't like knitting things that aren't functional, especially slipper socks. Just, I, you could easily fall and break your neck with those. <laughs> I've done it, okay? Because I used to crochet socks with worsted and weight. Oh my gosh, slip and fall. It's a thing. It can happen. And I just, that's why I like DK weight socks. They're just as fast. I mean, not really, but they're fast, okay? And easy and still bulky enough where you can see what you're doing. Mine's covered in Angora cat hair, Angora and cat hair, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bunny. I flippin' love knitting toe-up socks. Love it. Love it. <sighs> so as you can see, I'm really excited. I hope I'm not sounding like a salesperson. I just absolutely positively, positively believe in this class. And I think it'll help a lot of people who were like me, who really wanted to knit socks, but couldn't because it was difficult. Or even if you're already knitting socks, you know, this is a super duper fast way to do it. Um, it's two at a time. It's not fidgety. It's, I just kind of go against the rules a lot and I make my own rules. And that's how I kind of got it to work for me because what they were telling me to do in, in sock tutorials and in sock patterns, I was just like, why are we counting? Why are we measuring? Why are we checking gauge? Like, ain't no one got time for that. This pattern has no measuring, no, well, a little bit of measuring, but honestly, I don't measure. I don't measure a thing. I don't do gauge. I just, honestly, when I knit my socks, I grab a ball of freaking sock yarn. I grab some skinny needles that look good. I don't even check what they are. What are these? I have no flipping idea. And I just go. 
<laughs> and that is the beauty of knitting socks toe up my way. Like it's just grab what you want and just go. Ain't no one got time for measuring gauge, pattern. So, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't want to sound like an infomercial. I really don't, but I just want to let you know it's just a lot of fun. And I think that's my cue to go, y'all. My doggy is ready to go in and explore the inside. She is so sweet. <laughs> so cute. So needy. <laughs> So thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to the podcast. I'm going to try to edit that sound out. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to have to head out. My puppies are ready to go in, and I am ready to finish up this sock class after talking about it. Oh, I love it. I could just, like, be buried in these socks. Like, look. Whew. And this is just random DK weight just be buried in socks right now remember that song if I die young bury me in socks <laughs> lay me down in a bed of socks <laughs> sink me in a sock yarn pile <laughs> what is my life all right I'm gonna go now <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching my crazy show. See y'all next time.